Welcome everyone to another video on how to increase privacy and security for both Windows and Mac and really all devices because in order to increase security and privacy on your desktop or laptop computers, you need to increase security and privacy on your mobile devices as well. But today's topic is going to be centered around passwords, good habits and how to manage those passwords and what sort of passwords you should be using and why it's important. There's been a push in the industry to try to eliminate passwords with things such as biometrics, for example, fingerprint scanners or face recognition, face ID, voice authentication, uh, lock patterns that are you know popular on Android devices. And all of those are very convenient and easy to use because they're quick. They get you in and out of your device, in and out of what you're trying to access. And so they're very convenient, but as far as security, they're not very good. It's been shown time, time and time and time again that it can be fairly easy for someone with any sort of skill to bypass those biometric uh, locks. And so generally speaking, it's best to go with a good solid password combined with two-step verification. I like biometrics as a third step verification, but using that alone is not the best option. Now there are some requirements that define a good strong password. It should at least minimum be 16 characters long and a combination of upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols. And up on your screen right now, this is, is an example of what a strong password would look like. Now, it also needs to be random. You'll notice that this there's no rhyme or reason to this, and that is another requirement for a good strong password. Now, please note I said minimum requirements. I would recommend going closer to 25 characters. That is more what I would consider a better option, but minimum 16 characters, upper and lowercase letters, numbers, symbols, and completely random should suffice. Now, in addition to those requirements, you also need to make sure that you never ever use the same password twice. The reason for that is if someone gains access to one of your accounts or gains you know, one of your passwords, they now have access to everything if the passwords are all the same. However, if everything is using a unique password, well then you're not compromised across the board. And so this kind of segues into the prime meat of this video. You know, if you have a long list of passwords and they're all random and long and difficult to remember and difficult to type in, it can become a hassle. And so that's where we segue into password managers and the importance of having a password manager. Basically in short, a password manager is an encrypted program that stores all of your passwords and it can be used to sync across all devices. So that way, if you update the password on one device, it syncs it across all devices. It can be used to generate passwords. And some password managers will even alert you to if there's been a data breach, so that way you know to change the password. Now, there are a lot of password managing solutions out there, and I'm just going to pull up some examples. One of the first options you have to look into is your antivirus software may already include a password managing option with it, especially if you're using a third party or a paid antivirus, there's a good chance that there is a password managing option included in that service, but it does vary from antivirus to antivirus uh, programs. And so you will just have to look into it. So again, some of them are free, some of them are additional, but just make sure that whatever uh, option you go with, that it includes uh, syncing across all devices and that it supports all the devices that you're using. You don't want to use a password manager that's only available for your desktop and laptop, but doesn't work on your phone. You want to be able to sync it across all devices. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at options. In addition, there are dedicated services such as LastPass and Dashlane, which are two of the most popular uh, options out there. But there's also services such as 1Password, Sticky Password, and Keeper. And there's others that I don't have listed here, but these are some of the most popular options. Some of them do have free uh, options or plans to go with. Some of them are paid only. But just make sure you're looking, again, for those key features such as being able to sync across devices and being able to sync across all devices rather than just locally. And those are the, some of the main things you want to look for when you're looking for a service to go with. Now there's also open source options such as Bitwarden which is free and that makes it a great option. In addition it syncs across all of your devices. You can see that it supports multiple operating systems, multiple browsers. It's available for mobile. And when speaking about browsers Basically what it's talking about here is one of the key features about a, a password manager is that it has the autofill option for typing in your passwords for you. When you're using all these passwords and they're long and random and they've got all these different characters, it can be kind of a pain or difficult thing to type in. A good password manager will often type those passwords in for you so you don't have to do it. Now, there is a little security issue with that. You know, It's usually better to just look it up and type it in yourself but this is better than nothing, and so it does support that feature here. Now, in addition, 
This would be my top recommendation, KeyPass, which is also open source and free, but it's not as attractive as some of these previous options. It's not as user friendly. Uh, again, it's not as marketable. You can see the interface right here. It's just, you know, kind of an older looking program. It does require some setup, and I've done a tutorial on how to set this program up. I will link it down below in the notes, down in the video description. But this is my top recommendation. Again, open source, free, syncs across all devices with proper setup, it works on all devices and it's one of the most secure options. And so this is something I would definitely look into. Now there is another alternative out of the box option, which is master password. It is a little more, again, advanced. It uses algorithms to generate passwords. So it does require memorizing a few things in order for this to work. If you have a bad memory or don't wanna deal with something that's a little more complicated, I would avoid this, but it is kind of an interesting concept that you can look into as an alternative. Now, one password managing option we haven't talked about yet is the browsers themselves, which can be very convenient because often when you're creating a password, you're actually already in the browser. You know, you create it, you set it up, you type it in and hit submit, and the browser will often just right then and there prompt you to save or update the password. And so it's very easy and convenient to just use the browser as a password manager. That is a definite pro, but some of the cons are the browsers are generally not as secure as some of these previous options. And so if you're going to go with the web browser as your password manager, here's a couple things I would recommend you do. Number one, switch to Firefox. And generally, if your goal is to increase privacy and security anyways, Firefox is a better option than Google Chrome. In addition, its password managing options are better than Google Chrome. And so that's why I would recommend, again, if you're going to use a browser as your password manager, use Firefox. Now, some security measures you're going to want to take if, again, you use a browser as your password manager is you want to make sure all of your devices are encrypted. And the reason for that is because often a common way to exploit the browser to gain access to passwords requires direct access to the device. And if the device is encrypted, well, it's going to make that much more difficult to do. So just make sure that you're using full uh, device encryption on all of your devices. Again, if you're going to use a browser as your password manager. In addition, Firefox does have the option to go to options and then look for login and passwords and set up a master password, which will help protect your passwords. So you definitely want to make sure you have this box checked with a master password set up uh, to protect your passwords in Firefox. Another reason why I would recommend Firefox over Google Chrome as a password manager is because they have a dedicated app called Lockwise, which you can download in addition to the Firefox browser. It's a great way, an easy way to manage your passwords and get access to them on the go, especially on mobile devices. And so again, this is another pro to using Firefox over Google Chrome when managing passwords. Now up on your screen right now is a photo of what it will look like if you use Firefox as your password manager. You can see it gives you a list on the left hand side. And again, this will sync across all devices because Firefox works on all devices. And you'll also notice that kind of on the top left hand side, there's some uh, notifications. Firefox will actually notify you if there's been a breach with one of the passwords you have stored in the browser. And you can also click on more information so it can tell you what exactly was breached, when it was breached. And so this will alert you to change your passwords if needs be. Now, a lot of the other previous options we've gone over have this feature, but it's often included in the paid versions, not the free version. So it's kind of nice to get it for free just right here in Firefox. Now, one thing all of these services and options have in common is you're going to have to uh, memorize at least one password your master password in order to gain access to the database of all your passwords. So for that one, you're going to have to take some additional steps. What I generally recommend is that is the one password you're going to want to write down. And this is a password you're definitely going to want to make longer than just 16 characters. I would recommend again closer to 25. Just for an example, I'm going to add some additional characters here. And so for example, this could be my master uh, password. And what I would do is write this down, you know, somewhere and then store that piece of paper inside a secret safe that is again secret or hidden that no one else is aware of and in addition to that there's going to be a part of this password that you don't write down so this is the master password that i write down on again a piece of paper that i store in a safe and then i'm just going to have to remember that in addition to this master password i'm going to have to include my phone number and so even if someone does gain access to the safe and that piece of paper all they will see is this. They will have no clue that in addition to the end, you have to add the phone number. And the phone number should be something that you can easily memorize because you already know your phone number. 
And so that part shouldn't be difficult to, to remember. You just have to remember that, you know, this is your password. It's stored in your safe. You got to obviously remember the passcode to your safe. And then just remember that you got to add your phone number to the end when typing it in. And again, you don't write, don't write this part down on the paper because again, if someone gains access to this piece of paper in the safe, they won't know about the phone number part and so they still won't have access to your master password. Just a couple quick side notes and I may do some dedicated videos on these topics but when it comes to secret questions or security questions use fake answers and store those in your password manager and also make sure you're always using two-step verification and again I'll probably do a dedicated video on that as well but using just the password itself is not good enough you do need to be using two-step verification and fake answers to your secret and security questions. That's everything for this video. If you have any comments or questions, please post them down below. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you found it helpful, please go ahead and consider sharing it. And please also consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notifications on future videos.